Take a look at these pictures. They are from real life images of interior designs. We know they look nice, but did you ever ask yourself, why does it look nice? Or here's a more important question. How do you know this picture is real? Because it looks real, Mr. Clonebot Zack, is the most common answer I hear. So let me ask you this way. Why does a picture of a real place look real? Maybe before I answer that question, let me ask another. Why do video games and movie CG effects look so beautiful and at times realistic? Well, you wouldn't believe how simple the answer is, and maybe you'll be astonished. The answer is textures, light, and shadow contrast. Our eyes know things are real or perceive them to be real when you create all three of these elements, textures, light, and shadow contrast. Take a look at the model we created in SketchUp. It's nice, has a good shape, interesting textures, but it could be better. Now I'll take a look at the same exact model after it's been retouched with textures, light, and shadows with iClone 3. Looks better and more realistic, but why? Hey, I know you know the answer, because of textures, light, and shadow contrast. Therefore, the four texture channels, diffuse, which is the image of the floor, bump, which is the natural imperfections of the wood, specular, which is the light interactions with the other textures, and finally reflection, the polished surface of the floor working together, makes my mind believe I am looking at a polished wooden floor. All of this can easily be simulated in iClone 3. Let me show you how. So let's add realism to our models using iClone 3. We can use the eyedropper found under the materials and texture settings on the modify panel so that we can cherry pick which texture we wish to adjust. Notice this texture only has one texture channel in use, the diffuse channel. I think the diffuse is a little bright so I can adjust the brightness to negative 100. Then let's select the reflection channel and add in a reflection texture. Notice the effect the texture has on the model. We can also fine tune and adjust the strength of the selected texture channel by adjusting the strength. What about the handles? Let's adjust the handle by simply adjusting the diffuse and ambient and specular colors, as well as adjusting the specular settings. We can fine tune in the texture to create a metallic look without even having to open any of the texture channels. Adjust the specular and notice the change it has. Maybe we should adjust the diffuse to be a lighter gray, and there we go, perfect. We can do the same for our wooden floor surfaces. The material balls have quite a few different types of wooden materials to choose from. So after we find a material we want to use and load it into our scene, we can adjust certain parts of it. So let's go up and take a look at saturation. Notice when I adjust the saturation down, it becomes this old, dull, aged looking wood. And as I adjust the saturation up, to 100, it becomes a nice polished floor, so let's adjust the saturation back. We can also do the same with brightness, so we can change the darkness of the wood either to be extremely dark or bright white, so let's just adjust it a little bit down so the wood looks a little darker. But what about the tiling of the floor? We can also adjust the UV settings, either in ratio of one another or separately. But for this quick demonstration, I'll retain the ratios as well as the effect all the channels together. Notice that all the textures have changed. The diffuse channel, the specular channel, as well as the bump. And notice the differences from smaller settings to the larger settings. But let's just keep the setting of 1.5 for our UV settings, then let's add a reflection channel. Excuse me, reflection channel. So let's add it in. That looks nice. And now my room has a nice polished floor. Let's do the same for our luxury wood panel on the wall. So for the wooden panel, let's go and add in another wooden texture. And notice the changes that occur when I change the diffuse strength to zero. Now the bump shows through clearly. But if I change the bump down to zero as well, you get this flat, plain white wall. So let's adjust the bump back to 100 and also do the same for our diffuse. Change it back to 100. Alright, for the border of the wood, let's just quickly select it and add in a material for the wood. Alright, what about the wooden uh, part of, excuse me, what about the wooden part of the glass table? By just quickly changing the brightness and the specular, we can have an outstanding look for the table.
So how do we make glass look like glass? The easiest way is using the opacity, but as you can see the opacity can only change the transparency of the object. There's actually a much better way, so let me show you a few tips on how to do it. First let's add in a reflection, and then adjust the strength down, and it now has a reflective texture to it. But then we want to change the diffuse color all the way down to black. That way the texture of the reflection comes out more clearly. And let's do the same with ambient. Choose a mid shade blue and then adjust it down to a darker color. And then for the specular, we want to push it all the way up to white. And then using the specular adjustment settings, let's adjust the specular up a little. Now it has a more glass texture type to it. So let's add a material to our vase. So we go in and find a metallic surface, and there we go. And notice it comes with a diffuse and reflection, but I don't like the UV settings for the diffuse, so let's change the UV setting to a smaller number to make the adjustment. Now it looks better. Now we can also add in reflection to our vase, and we can adjust the settings, but let's just keep it at 100. Then we can add in another object, and notice how the other object, when I move it around in the scene, reflects off my vase. It's a very, very beautiful base now. A really cool glow effect in our room. First, let's add a 3D ball into our room, then move it in position. Then select the glow texture channel, and we can select from several different glow textures. After the glow texture is added in, we can adjust the strength of the glow. Now the glow texture doesn't actually produce light, but we can create that effect with a point light. So let's add a point light in. And notice that we can change the color of our point light to say maybe yellow. We can also affect the intensity of the light by means of changing the range of the light. And notice as I move the light around it has an effect on the room. But wait, let me change the ambient light down to dark, make it a little darker for you. And you can see the effect more clearly. Finally, the final step is to attach the point light to the ball, so that way as we move the glow ball around, the light will follow it. Let's also add in a light to the room itself. Notice that when I turn on the light, you can see a doodad that tells you which direction the light is pointing from. Let's change that directional light into a spotlight. The benefits of using a spotlight is that it creates regional light source, which results in specific area detail rendering, better quality and shadow effects, as well as suitable for interior light simulation. And just like with point light, we can choose decay as well as adjust the range of the spotlight. Also we can change the spotlight beam to make it even more narrow or a wider beam, as well as changing the fall off which affects the edges on where the light will begin to fall off. By adjusting the ambient light, we can determine whether our scene will take place in the daytime or the nighttime. But since my scene is taking place during the daytime, I will set the ambient light back to a brighter level. But what is light without shadows? If we scroll down to the very bottom of our modify panel, we can find the shadow settings, where we can choose the self cast shadow. Notice now all the props in the room are now casting shadows based off the spotlight that we're using. We can adjust the blur settings to either higher levels or lower levels. Plus we can adjust the opacity to choose how dark the shadows will appear. By adjusting the blur level lower, and also adjusting the bias lower, you can create really realistic shadows. Then by moving the spotlight around, the shadows will adjust themselves in real time. Another really cool effect that you can add into your scene is by adding in something like the window frame here, which will cast really in interesting and cool effects on the shadows. With Google SketchUp, you can create models quickly and easily, then take those models and create realistic scenes with materials, texture channels, as well as light and shadows in iClone 3. I showed you the basic tricks of how to create a realistic room. 
saw how certain texture channels can be fine-tuned by just adjusting the brightness, contrast, and specular. You saw how beautiful scenes can be made with just adding in some light interactions and creating contrasts of light and shadow on your models. Don't be afraid to experiment with lighting and texture channels to create the perfect scene. Remember, realism has three major elements – textures, light, and shadow contrast. If you try to craft realism and experiment with your creativity, then you'll be well on your way to becoming a great 3D artist.